absolutely adore war games. It's why I ruined my life by leaving my lucrative legal career behind and instead dedicating myself to making YouTube videos all about them on the internet. My parents were not pleased with that decision. It does come with some perks though, because this month I received a challenge, a double dare no take backsies challenge. So I knew it was serious. One Page Rules have reached out and asked me to create my very own army for Grim Dark Future, all to celebrate the launch of their brand new army forge system, which allows users to create, modify, and publish their very own armies for the One Page Rules series of games. And having been raised by movies all about integrity and honor, like Gladiator, Homeward Bound, Shawshank Redemption, and Euro Trip, I accepted that challenge with dignity. There's just one problem. I have to, you know, actually make an army for Grim Dark Future. And that is actually going to be pretty tough. So if you're not sure about Grim Dark Future and what it is, then let me introduce you to it because it is one of the biggest, best war games around. If you've ever been curious about Warhammer or wanted to play a miniature war game for yourself, then without a doubt, Grim Dark Future by One Page Rules should be perhaps one of your first stops. This is a fast, furious system that is very easy to play, very accessible, and filled with strategic decision making. I've talked about Grim Dark Future a lot on the channel before, from how affordable it is to how much fun it is. You probably heard about the game already, and it's also the only game that I actually believe when it says it only takes 90 minutes to play. And it's also really famous for having a lot of armies that you can play as in the game. And that's great because while the game does have a full line of official miniatures, it's also a miniature agnostic game, meaning that you can really use any minis that you want to play with when it comes time to game. And that makes for a lot of available choice if you're someone like me in the position of having to create your very own army. <laughs> so yay for me. But I also want to do something that has never been done in Grim Dark Future before. But I also have to be true to myself. To quote a great man, I'm gonna get real weird with it. And that's a bit of a problem because any army I build, I'm gonna wanna play them. But most of the miniatures that I actually own in my perhaps far too large collection, they're all for skirmish games. They're mostly an eclectic, inconsistent mix of styles from all over the place, and they just wouldn't make for a very good army in a larger scale game like Grim Dark Future. And most of the large scale armies that I do own, well, I mean, they are consistent and they share a theme, but they're also mostly Warhammer armies. And there are already factions available in Grim Dark Future that thematically tie into everything Warhammer. So I don't really wanna use any of those. So what I'm going to do is get inspired by my childhood. I'm gonna go back to the early 2000s during the golden age of the real-time strategy genre. We're gonna go straight to the source. We're gonna pass by all the games that I played in my childhood, Warcraft, Age of Empires, Rise of Legends, Maelstrom, and go straight to my favorite game of all time, Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. And we're gonna do what those guys did. We're gonna fuck up history. Hit it, boys. By 1949, the Second World War seemed to have no end in sight, and the Germans were desperate, having made bad decision after bad decision in their attempt to conquer the globe. But then the worst thing that could happen happened. The Germans discovered the secret of atomic energy. It took them only three months to turn all of Earth into an irradiated wasteland. The entire human race rendered extinct. Well, mostly, there were survivors. A secret German laboratory deep within the mountains of Antarctica managed to survive. Led and operated by the mad Dr. Orlok von Schreck, inventor of the nuclear bullet, the spider tank, and of course, the Wolfman serum. And while he didn't have a great grip on reality, I mean, we all got to admit it, even he could see that it would be a pretty rubbish time living in an irradiated Antarctica surrounded by monstrous mutant penguins. So he did the only thing sensible available. He set to work on a means to open wormhole portals to other dimensions. And to the amazement of the remaining garrison in his secret Antarctica lair, he succeeded. Naming his new portal technology the Bifrost Cannon, after noting the resemblance of its trademark rainbow beams to the mythical bridge of Norse legend, now a terrifying army of zombies, wolfmen, giant mech walkers armed with nuclear bombs, and of course, little by 
bicycles, march across extra dimensional rainbow bridges to explore and conquer strange new worlds for their necromancer scientist mad Dr. Von Shrek. And who knows what other foul creatures that lie between realities have been taken and forced into his service as well. There will be no peace amongst the stars. This is the Vogel Group. So yeah, it turns out that I basically only own one single army that isn't already playable in Grim Dark Future already, and that is World War II Germans. So it's a good thing that this video is sponsored by One Page Rules because it'll almost certainly be demonetized by YouTube. Now look, Grim Dark Future isn't a historical game, it's a sci-fi game. So I'm not just gonna take a World War II army and put them into Grim Dark Future. I want this army to resemble something closer to the Germans in the first 20 minutes of Hellboy. And luckily for for us, while One Piece Rules doesn't have a line of miniatures appropriate for this army, the game is miniature agnostic, so I'll be making my army based on a range of miniatures available to buy from Warlord Games. So that's the foundation out of the way, now we have to actually build it in the One Piece Rules Army Forge. And you know what, these developer tools look really easy to use, so I think we should just get started and see what we can come up with in the system. Uh, okay, so let's, let's actually make this army then. Okay, so let's go to the One Piece Rules army forge and then create a book okay so we're gonna make our very first unit let's be really unexciting let's get our baseline done first right, let's do our basic infantry squad and they will be the foundation of our army there'll be nothing to write home about but it'll give us a little bit of an idea about how the rest of the army is going to look okay so we want them to be nice and cheap uh they'll have low defense because they're just wearing uniforms and their guns aren't that great maybe just give them an upgrade here for a light machine gun but otherwise they're just using primitive rifles against sci-fi armor Army, so I'm not gonna give them AP or anything like that. AP is armor piercing. Basically it reduces the enemy defense save. And the system actually calculates out all the points for the unit when you make it. So that's pretty cool. And in theory should mean that anything I make here should you know, in theory, be balanced. Now let's have a little bit of fun. Our second unit is going to be zombies. I need zombies in this, in this army. I need them. I love the idea of Von Shrek just dropping these zombies onto planets. It's so irresponsible. Let's call them Dread Pioneers. They're going to be rubbish, but they will be our objective holders. So let's make them slow and let's make them kind of resilient. I want there to be hordes of them. So cheaper than basic infantry. They're not going to get any guns. I'll give them regeneration. I'll give them undead. And let's make a weapon for them. Zombie bites. Yes, yes. Feel my zombie army. Okay, and the earth they come from, like Reich 5 or whatever it's called, is super radiated. So let's give them an upgrade. Let's let them become radioactive. They should actually let them deal out quite a bit of damage, especially because they should be throwing a lot of dice. Now, let's lean into the zombie undead theme a little bit more. Let's create a hero unit, and one that specifically is designed to buff up the zombies. And let's call him the... Mutant Master. Yes. Okay. I love this name. <laughs> and I'm actually basing this on a model that I already own. Specifically, this guy here. And you can see he's got a big mutated hand there. So we're going to give him a mutant punch in melee. And um, we'll give that blast so he can actually hit multiple people with the one attack. He's basically Sauron you know, but German. No, we didn't know Sauron wasn't German. Let's also make a new rule for him. So we want him to buff zombies and our zombies main thing is that they rely on regeneration. It's basically like an armor save to survive hits. So let's allow him to increase their durability by giving him a 12 inch aura, allowing any undead around him to re-roll regeneration rolls. That will be actually perfect. Okay, and because he's mad scientist, let's just give him a laser gun. You know, when in space. Right, we're gonna need some vehicles now as well. Um, we could go really boring with this, like pick up some standard half tracks, but you know, let's not do that. Let's go for something a little bit different. I have this spider tank, and I want that. I want to be able to play with that in this game. So let's make that into one page rules. Let's go with the auto creeper. Yes, and because it has big spider legs, it should be able to crawl up walls. So let's give it Strider so that it can ignore difficult terrain. And it is open topped and it is a light vehicle, so it should be pretty easy to kill. Let's give it just toughness six and a pretty low armor save. And toughness is basically hit points in Grip Dark Future. So if we give it toughness six, it just means it needs to be shot six times before it dies. And we'll also give it an auto cannon and it'll be fast and a scout as well. Okay, now Warlord Games who make this miniature, they actually sell a closed compartment version of this with a flamethrower. So, you know, who am I to argue? So if someone's bought that version of the auto crawler, let's not leave them in the lurch. Let's create an upgrade 
for this. That gives it plus one defense for a sealed compartment and a flame cannon. And let's call that flame cannon the devil's tongue. Hell yeah. Okay, so now we need a tank. Let's just go for the classic. Let's go for the Panzer tank. I mean, I'm not going to get into the weeds about Panzer 3, Panzer 4, whatever. Use any tank you want. This will give us a little bit of armor on the field and some stain power, and we'll give it a so-so battle cannon and a machine gun. But here's where one of our big themes is going to come into this. We're going to give it a Bifrost upgrade. This is going to be to its main turret, so it'll have a Bifrost cannon. And this cannon will shoot rainbows in to an enemy opening up multi-dimensional portals right inside enemy vehicles. Basically, it teleports you to another dimension. And that means that it's going to be able to destroy really heavily, really sophisticated futuristic tanks, even though it's pretty, you know, it's pretty primitive from the 20th century. So let's create the Bifrost Cannon. Uh, we're going to make that super specialized at destroying heavy armor. So there's not going to be a great rate of fire there. It's not going to have lots of shots. It'll have like one big shot and it'll just do a hell of a lot of damage. So let's give it loads of armor piercing and give it the deadly trait, meaning that it's going to deal multiple damage against a single lone unit. And I kind of want this to operate like a portal gun as well. So let's give it the ability that if you don't shoot the cannon, you can instead use it to teleport people around the field. And basically what that means in practice is that it'll be able to put people around it into reserves. Now, there's no rule in Grimdark Future that allows for that. It doesn't exist. So we're going to have to create our own. And that's super easy in this system. We just go to the rules section, new custom special rule, and we just pop it in. And that will allow us to put units into reserve, even if they've already been deployed in the field. And you know what? Let's create some specialist infantry units who can take advantage of this. So in the lore, they're going to be able to teleport into the field by using their man-portable Bifrost beams. And then we're going to call them Flash Troopers because they teleport in, they unleash fire, and then they flash away in a shower of rainbow glitter. Okay, so let's give them a rule that allows them to deep strike if you play Warhammer or Ambush in One Page Rules, meaning that they can be deployed anywhere on the map and we'll theme this as the Bifrost Bridge ability. And that's actually an existing rule, but we're just going to rename it to something a little bit more thematic for our army and the system accommodates for that. We just call it an alias. And you know what? That's actually really fun. That's a really cool idea. Let's give it to our entire army. So let's create an upgrade package here that units can actually buy using points. So in theory, you could play with an entire army that can teleport into the field. I really like that. That's actually really cool. I mean, these guys are traveling through time and space. Makes sense. Now, back to the Flash Troopers, I think we're going to also make these guys our elite forces. I'm basing these on some Warlord miniatures that look really badass. So let's make them pretty badass themselves in terms of stats. So we're going to make an upgrade package. This will allow players to upgrade their Flash Troopers if they want them to be a little bit more elite, a little bit better at shooting. You know, if you want to lean into that elite vibe. So we're going to give them slightly better guns and as well as that, the ability to take the Mantis targeting system named after renowned scientist Mantis Toboggan, MD. I also want to do a, like a fast bike unit as well with a little beacon that will allow us to use our Bifrost entry just closer to the enemy, just give us some tactical options. That could be pretty cool. So let's just call it the Storm Rider. Just make a little bike. I think we need to add a little bit more gothic horror into this. We've got the zombies, that's cool, but I think we also need some werewolves. I think the army needs some werewolves. I have these wolfman miniatures, so I mean like, you know, I may as well get some use out of them. Okay, so we're gonna make these really powerful offensively and let's make them fast too, because you know, they're, they're, they're like actual wolfmen. And these are going to be our bruisers. So these are going to be like the guys who can actually get into melee and do a little bit of damage. And um, we're going to give them regeneration as well, because that, that's, I mean, they're werewolves. So that's pretty cool. They seem pretty easy, actually. And then, of course, what army would be complete without a mech walker? Let's call this the Juden Walker. We're going to give it some machine guns. Uh, we'll give it an anti-tank cannon and some fists as well for fighting. And the one that I have, the one that I've built, has a howitzer on the top of it. Let's say that that is a mini nuke launcher. Yes, we have to make a mini nuke launcher. Okay, that's going to be a pretty insane artillery weapon. Okay, that's very expensive. That's a little bit oppressively powerful, but we'll see. We'll see in playtesting. And of course, we're also going to need an officer unit too. Let's make him a pretty weak shooter. We basically want like a supporting unit, not a killy unit. So he can just have a pistol. And we also want him to be pretty vulnerable. So he's not going to have an amazing defensive stat, but we'll give him tough three because he has still a hero unit. And then let's give 
give him something really cool. Let's give him something really special that will kind of define his role in the army. Let's let him activate another unit around him for a second time. I don't think that actually exists in the game because it's kind of broken. It's kind of insane, but let's do it. And let's let's start it out pretty cautiously. Okay, right. This might be a little bit too much. We'll need to play test this, but let, let's make it very expensive. It's a really good ability, but ultimately it's on a pretty weak unit. So that should hopefully be pretty balanced. And there we have it, a completely built army. One that I think will be really interesting to play. So in theory, this isn't super elite. It's also not a horde army. Kind of occupies this middle ground, but it has some powerful weapons that it can kind of punch up. The Bifrost cannon is sort of insane. It's got a bunch of undead and weird monsters mixed in there as well. I think this will be really fun on the table. And of course, it will be super mobile as well if you choose to upgrade all your units with the ability to teleport. So let's see if we've made something good or something that's just a complete mess. I'm gonna play test this and get back to you. Okay, so I've actually played the army now and I have so many thoughts. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. It basically came together exactly Exactly how I wanted. It felt pretty good to handle on the table and it felt strong, it felt powerful, but not like too strong and not too powerful. There was a lot of decision making, especially with the Commandant, it was a lot of fun. The zombies felt really cool to utilize, they felt very unique. And it was really fun to use them on the table as a blocker for my weaker, more vulnerable squads, which to be honest, most of the infantry for this army seems to be. And the teleporting around at the beginning of the game and then using the tank to do so as well felt really cool. I really liked the Bifrost Cannon and I really liked like the utility that it brings. And you know what? It wasn't too difficult to make this army at all. I'm really impressed with the army forge system. I think it's really cool. I was told by One Piece Rules that it's basically the same system that the devs use. And I do believe that. It felt really robust. And there was some getting used to how the upgrade packages work and how you make rules. They kind of get nested in. So you make a rule, then you make a weapon that uses that rule, and then you make a unit that uses that weapon. But once I got that all figured out, it all came together pretty intuitively and it was a lot of fun to utilize. And anyone can actually use this system to make their very own armies, their very own units, insert them into existing armies. So you've really got no excuse not to buy whatever miniature your heart desires because now you can just stat them up on the Army Forge and use them in One Page Rules. That's pretty cool. But why not try it for yourself? Go check out the One Page Rules Army Forge, link in the description below, or even just check out my army in the community books. It's been published up now. Tell me what you think about it. I'll be tweaking it. I'll be adding some new units here and there. Maybe a amending some of the stuff, do some playtesting, get some balancing done. Let me know what you think about the army in the description below. And a huge thanks to One Page Rules for sponsoring today's video. If you enjoyed it, here's a video where I reviewed getting into the system. And a massive thanks to my patrons, especially CryptoKev, Novany, and Travis Hunter. Thanks so much, guys. And I'll catch you all next time. Bye-bye.